Hey guys, welcome back. Just Carve Rob. Yep. So this is what our cowboy is looking like. He's all done up, painted, and all that stuff. We just got to uh, put the Maj Paj to him. Hey, birdie, birdie, birdie. Ha, 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 ha. So we just got to put the Maj Paj to him, and uh, he'll be done. All right? So that's what he's looking like, cowboy. Cowboy birdhouse. Yep. It's all wood burnt. We burnt all of his beard hairs in. Took like 20 years. Um, so yeah, still got to go back and, uh, darken the age lines a little bit. I might just do that with the wood burner. Okay. So that's what he's going to look like right there. Final look of the cowboy. And Maj Paj won't change him too much. It might give him a little bit of a sheen, but that's about it. Okay. So, just got done painting him. We got to let him dry up a little bit before we can uh, put the schmodge podge to him. All right. So, Rob, what are you going to do today? Well, I just painted. What more do you want from me? Uh, yeah, it, believe it or not, here we are in the May and... It's freaking snowing. Can you believe that? Snowing. Rob, you forgot your coffee. You left it way over there. All right. Well, anyway, I can get the coffee. Okay. We got this last little piece of wood here that we got from our buddy Pete Blair up there in uh, British Columbia, Canada. In the town of Land Ladner, Ladner, Canada, in British Columbia. I got two rulers, and you think I can find one? I just had the one ruler. All right, well, at least we got an excuse to go get our coffee. We're looking for a ruler. Okay. So, anywho. Stunt worm! Stunt worm! <whistles> okay, so anyway, this piece of wood is two inches wide by four inches tall. Don't know what kind of wood it is, but look at the grain on that wood. It is super duper tight. Carves like a dream. So, thanks Pete. We don't know what kind of wood it is. You don't know what kind of wood it is. But, we were, we're going to carve something into it. Stunt worm! <laughs> Does the flip. Will he stick the landing? All right, on his helmet. Okay. So I get a lot of questions. Where do you get your patterns from? Just carve, Rob. Well, I would say about 75, 80% of them come from my, my noggin. But the rest of them come from books like this. Okay. This is a good book, guys. Eight bucks US. Eight bucks for that book. Better deal if you get the get the subscription. But I've got a lot of these books, okay? Once a month they come out and I usually buy them. So this is I've got water on the table from the from doing the uh painting the cowboy nesting box thing. Okay, this one will be displayed until May 11th. So, I bought this in April. Towards the end of April. So, the next one probably won't be out till after May. Okay. And there's lots of cool projects in here. Okay. there's We're going to be carving this guy. This grumpy hawk. The grumpy hawk. We're going to be carving him. 
because I think he's cool, Grumpy Hawk. And he's not a little carving. This is the pattern form. Okay? This is the pattern for the Grumpy Hawk. Take a screenshot. Take a screenshot. Okay? Grumpy Hawk. Front, side, and side with the wing. Grumpy Hawk. Grumpy Hawk. Take a, take a screenshot. But that's not what we're carving today. I marked the page what we're carving today. Today we are carving. Oh, we're carving a baby dragon. Okay. And that's what he, you know, he just carved Rob. He is not going to look like that. He'll probably look a little different. Um, but the nice thing is this book gives you a step-by-step -step on how to carve get this stuff out of the way so you can see it how to carve the baby dragon okay hand tools air tools whatever you want to use this guy looks like he's carving it with the uh, v tools uh got some knife work going on there then it looks like he's got some uh wood burning going on yeah that looks like a wood burner to me knife and v tool and anything you can do with a v tool you can do with a knife guys okay zoom in for you okay there he is baby dragon baby dragon right there now he's not very big he's only this picture is way bigger I think the he's calling for a two by two by six piece of wood, basswood, right there. Is, prepare your blank using a bandsaw to cut a two by two by six, or fifty one cm by fifty one cm by fifteen cm. Basswood block, draw a diagonal line from corner to corner, yada, 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 blah, blah, blah. Okay. And they give you, he gives you the pattern up here. So. Or, I'll tell you, I think it'd be a lot easier if you just start with a round piece, two inch round. Because uh, if you look here, you can see, okay, it went down two inches. You can see that he ran made around, right? So you could, if you got a piece of branch that's two inches in diameter or a little bit bigger, I think that's the better way to go, because you've got to take this block and make it round. Usually, we're taking round and making it into a block. Drives me crazy sometimes. Okay, so uh, yeah, see, he even he even uh, put in the center lines and then put a circle in at the top there so he knew how thick to carve that so if you've got a branch a piece of birch or pine or whatever whatever you got some a two by four uh something round i mean you're carving something square into something round here guys so Probably better. I might just go out in my wood pile and see if I've got a birch branch that's already two inches in diameter. But uh, if not, I've got this awesome piece of unknown uh, wood that I got from Pete. I know it carves awesome, so I'm tempted just to stick right with this piece here and go ahead and carve it round. So that's what we're going to be working on here today, guys. Carving. A hatching dragon. Okay. So uh, I'll get everything set up. And I, I'm going to, to be honest with you, I'm not going to carve this with my knife. I've got a perfectly good belt sander with an 80 grit belt on it that will take this thing down to a circle in no time flat. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay. Just to uh, move this process along a little bit. So... Let me go take care of that and get this thing down to size. Who knows? I might just do it with a knife. I don't know. But you guys don't want to watch me make a round piece of wood or square piece of wood into a round piece of wood anyway. Okay. 
And I, you know, I was looking at this back page here. Want to be a better carver? Vortec F5 Plus. 500,000 RPM at 40 pounds of pressure. Four and a half inches long, weighs 1.8 ounces. This is another air tool, high speed carver. Okay. Except it's made by this company. And if, if you guys are interested, there's the, uh, there's the number and the internet deal. Okay. And I went on, hey, I went and I looked, right? I looked at it. Um, myself. And the price is about the same as the SCM 400XS. That's the one I use all the time is the SCM 400SX. It went out of focus on us. Still out of focus. The heck is going on? Okay, there it's back in focus. I don't know about these cameras sometimes. So there's some information for you guys if you're interested in it. Um, I'm still going to sing the praises of the SCM high speed carver. I like mine so much. So that's what we're going to do there. So let's I'm going to go ahead and get set up for carving this little dragon egg guy. We're already halfway through our time, but I'll be right back so I'll see you in a second. All right, guys. Got an inch and 3 eighths OCC Doop, doop, doop. Yep, see, OCC tool. OCCT. So it's an OCC knife. Okay. Did our circle. Whoop. Like that. Measured down two inches. And we cut some notches in it. Okay. So we don't lose our place. Now we have to take these corners off. Okay. So we got to take them down to that line. All right. So, I guess uh, we can just chunk them right off there. Hey, I'm wearing a glove, guys. Wearing a glove. We can just chunk them right off there. See that grain? I don't know what kind of wood that is, Pete sent us, but sure is some nice grain. Look how smooth that cuts. Choop. Nice and smooth and shiny. Okay, now since we're going against the grain, it's just going to, it's just going to pop right off from there. Okay, so kind of keep your eye on it straight up and down. Make sure you're not cutting in too far this way. Okay. Uh, you guys with dremels, you're probably going to beat me on this one. Making this into a cylinder. Uh, I would suggest that if you have a big belt sander, don't be afraid to use it. Because this is probably going to take a little bit of time. Uh, probably longer than this video is going to be. So, okay. So that's what I'm going to do. Just give you a rough idea. Making this thing round. So let me get this done, and I'll be right back with you, all right? All right, guys, there we go. We took a square piece of wood, made it into a round piece of wood. Holy moly, guys. I'll tell you what. Wow, right in there. In the arm. These electric tools and stuff have totally ruined me. It's spoiled me. My forearms are burning like there's no tomorrow. Just from shaping that little thing, because you're using, believe it or not, you're using the muscles way back here in your forearms. When you're doing, holding the piece and, you know, shaping it around. Wow. Burn. You can feel the burn. Where's that coffee? Oh, where's an ibuprofen? Oh, my goodness. Wow. 
you know, it, it's been a while since we've carved anything with just a knife. We got all these fancy tools around here now. We've got the Dremels and the mini carvers and the, the high speed air tools and all that kinds of stuff. And holy mackerel. I didn't realize how carving with knives kept your arms in such good shape. No wonder. Gene Messer, he's a flat plane carver. Carves a lot of little characters and stuff. It's his birthday yesterday. Happy birthday, Gene. Uh, that guy, all he does is carve with knives. He could probably crack a coconut between his... In his hand, just go, crack, just crack, just squeeze it like an orange and get the milk out of it and have coconut milk. And then he'll have coconut to put on top of his coconut cake, his coconut birthday cake. Yeah, so, wow. I did not realize you use, you know, I've carved with a knife ever since I, my dad gave me my first pocket knife when I was like eight years old and I haven't stopped, I've Whittled sticks and whittled sticks. But man, never expected that kind of effect. Okay, stop your crying, Rob. What's the next thing we got to do, Rob? Okay, let's see. So that was step one. Step one here in the book. The book. Step one, make your square piece into a round piece. Ta-da, we've done that. Okay, what is step two? Measure down half of an inch and draw a line around the blank. Hey, look what I found. Woohoo! ruler. Okay. So then we uh, take our pencil and our ruler. And we measure down half of an inch right there. Put our ruler back so we can find it again. And we're just going to use our finger as our guide. I'm sure it doesn't have to be a perfect half of an inch. We're wood carving here. We're not making high precision rocket parts. I think Rob's going to start using his Dremel to carve this thing more than his knives. I hope that's the worst part of the carving. Or else I'm going to have to end this video and go inside and get some horse liniment and put it on my arms. Wow. I can't. Be Shut up, Rob. Stop whining. All right. So we've measured down a half inch or 1.3 centimeters from the top. Draw a line around. Around the blank, measure up one quarter of an inch from the bottom of the two inches. Okay, so from here to here is two inch. So now it says we got to measure up a quarter of an inch. So we need a ruler back again. Okay, so then we measure up a quarter of an inch, roughly. Okay. What are you doing out there today, Mario Tata? Huh? What are you making? Dave, you carve? Did anybody see Dave, you carve? Dave, you carve? I think he's got a Facebook or uh, a YouTube channel. I always see Dave, you carve on uh, Facebook. Carving Fusion World of Wood Carvers. Boy, that definitely looks like more than a quarter of an inch, doesn't it? Yeah, it is. Not very much, but about an eighth more than it should be. Pencil must have slipped in my hand. There, that looks more like a quarter of an inch. Okay, I believe this quarter of an inch mark is for the egg. 
the round part of the egg. Don't worry, we'll continue to read it so we get it right. Okay. See? Quarter of an inch. See, we were off of, we were off of about an eighth of an inch there, guys. So we won't pay no attention to this line. This line is a no good. No good, no good. That's why we do this stuff in pencil. So that it traces off. Number two pencil, just like you had to have in school for taking your test, right? Or a HB pencil, which is uh, for drawing. Has a really nice dark line. HB pencils are awesome. But the lead is softer, so they break easier too. Or you get a uh, nice mechanical pencil. I like my mechanical pencils because then I don't have to... Uh, ouch. Whoops, sorry about that, guys. Then I don't have to uh, sharpen them. Okay, let's see. Where were we? All right. The bottom of the 2-inch or the 5.1-centimeter carving area, draw a line around the bottom of the blank. The top line represents the top of the wings, and the bottom rep the bottom line re represents the bottom of the wings. Okay, so this will be the top of your wings. You guys in focus? The top of your wings, the bottom of your wings. Okay. Wow. Stop shaking, Rob. Okay, number three. Cut a notch. Cut a notch along the bottom line. Use the knife to round over the top corner. So this corner up here. Okay. Doop, doop, doop. Where were we? Okay, round over, round the top corner starting at the line using the same tool. Draw the top of the shell. And the other major landmarks referring to the pattern carving around these landmarks with a 930 seconds or 7 millimeter V tool. Okay, so that's part three. Okay, well, they got lines in there that they didn't tell us about. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to round this top over. We're going to round it over. We're going to take this corner, this edge off here, basically. And then we'll put our center line in coming down, okay? And then we're going to have to draw his head in, I think. Yep, pretty sure that's what's next. All right, so I think we're going to, I think we're going to cheat. I mean, we could do it with the, we could definitely do it with the knife. Round it over. My forearms are going to look like Arnold Schwarzenegger's when I get done with this guy. Look how nice that wood cuts, Pete. See that wood, Pete? See how nice that wood cuts? Man, I wish I knew what kind of wood this was, Pete. Pete's like, I just gave you some of my scrap wood. Stop your wine and just carve it. Now remember, these guys are not saying this. This is just Rob Babylon. Okay. So basically, I'm going to take these freaking corners off from here because they're hurting my hand. Got anything else to complain about, Rob? Well, I'm sure I could find something. Keep your thumb out of the way. Guys, you're doing this. You're bring, drawing the knife back towards yourself. Make sure your finger is below the cutting surface. So when that comes off the end, doop, see? If my thumb was up here, bank, would have got my thumb. Just going to come down and just taking them little points off so they don't bite into you so bad. That's all we're doing. Making it a little more hand friendly. 
You know, if you were wearing your gloves, Rob, you wouldn't have to worry about that. Well, yeah, you're probably right, Rob. Oh, yeah, Rob's losing it. The sun's shining. The birds are all huddled together in a mass because it is cold out there, guys. It's cold out there. Okay? So we got a round. We start rounding our top over. Got that round so it's not biting our hand so bad. <clears throat> uh -huh. It looks like we have to round the top over more. Okay. Um, according to this, we want about... I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. It doesn't say. It doesn't say. So I guess you just about the size of a quarter. I guess you want that oh, round area there. Who's pedinging me when I'm recording? Okay. So uh, let's go ahead and round this top over. Remember, we're supposed to we're supposed to round it over from this line towards the center. Okay. So we got to go down to that line. And continue to round it over. And in the book, it looks like it's about the size of a quarter. Okay. That's what I'm gleaming from it anyway. It looks like it's about the size of a quarter. And as I said earlier, guys, if you got a bandsaw, don't be... Or, uh, belt sander don't be afraid to use it if it wasn't so nasty cold outside that's where i would be right now is out in the big shop using the bandsaw to bring this down okay so now we continue to round the top over i'm really surprised they didn't give us a size there just for, you know, if nothing else, just for reference. Of course, that's the way it works sometimes. Got to use your, get you over here in the camera at least, use your own judgment. Because you don't got to go by the book. You don't got to go by the pattern. You can just use that as, as it's meant to be used as is kind of like a reference because uh, if you look at the, the pattern the pattern the pattern where's the, okay here if you look at the pattern of this little dinosaur guy here's our pattern if you look at the pattern you can see what you're working towards so that whole top is going to end up getting rounded over to a point. And then this is that. Remember we had to measure that. This pattern is a little bit bigger, I think. But uh, this is the top of the wing and this is the bottom of the wing. Is what they say. Okay. That other one I blew up a little bit. So you can see the bottom of the wing and the top of the wing. All right. So if you put a center line on there, you could almost line him up in the center and glue him on there. And then we may end up doing that. Probably should have done that after we rounded them over. Let's see. A pair of snizzers. Because you have to transfer all of this information here onto your piece of wood somehow. Whether it be by gluing it on there and eyeball aligning it. Or if you draw it on there, however you guys like to transfer your patterns. 
I know some guys like using uh, carbon paper. Like they used to use back in the day for documents. You know, in the old typewriters. All right. So, that's going to be it for this video, guys. And we will catch you. See, we can glue him right on there like that. Before we get too much of our corners cut back. Now, don't forget these wings are going to be back here. So... We're going to glue him. We're going to get our center line right there. And then I'm going to put a center. I'm going to fold him in half. And get a center line. And then we can uh, use that. Elmer's. School glue. And glue him. Onto. Here. And then we can come through the knife. And basically trace all that out. Yeah, that's just a quick and down and dirty, easy way to get a center line, guys. Like that. Boop, center line. Even though it's not center of his face, it's still center of the two pieces of paper. So that's... We can carve his face. See, that's what's going to give us that on each side of our center line. We line that up. Like that. That's going to give us our distance on both sides, like it showed in the book. All right, let's stop the video, and I'll catch you on the next one, where we will be doing some sort of carving on this dragon. I almost guarantee it. All right, guys, you know, I think this little dragon egg thing would be good on top of a stick. You know, if we take one of our sticks and drill this out back here, we can make this like a, a little rock or mountain or something. And then you can put that on top of a walking stick. And you have a little baby dragon on top of a walking stick. And then the rest of the dragon could feature wizard stuff. Like a carve a wizard in it. And uh, put dragon scale handle on it. Oh, yeah. Getting all kinds of ideas going boom in the hip brain. Now, where was I? Okay, guys. Be awesome. Carve something awesome. And we will catch you guys on the next one. Share, subscribe, and like. Hit that bell so you get notification for the next video when it comes up. All right? All right, just carve Rob saying, just carve. Be awesome, guys. Carve something awesome and be good to each other. Stay safe and we'll catch you on the next one. Bye bye.